John Rowley, a Democratic strategist and media consultant at Fletcher Rowley Media. So nice to have you all here. John, because it does feel to me like this, this issue of technology as part of it, this, this notion that we have a fast-moving technological world that impacts our politics. So it's not just running the old-fashioned commercials, although that's part of it, but all of these other aspects. You run campaigns. You do the media advertising for them. What are the things in terms of the technological aspects of building this strong party that the administration needs to have their eyes on? Well, I think one thing that Jim Messina talked about was that they threw out the 08 model and, and really rebuilt this campaign. And I think the, this is an important, intelligent, and it's a somewhat ideological discussion as mm -hmm. well of not just uh, building on what you have, but, but think about how the future is going to be different and then retool. And I, I think the other thing, when you think about what are the weaknesses of the party right now, you look at we don't hold Congress. The, in the state legislatures, we really got it handed to us in 2010. Yep. How do we rebuild at that level? And there's a little bit of an ideological uh, sorting out that we need to have. In the late 80s and early 90s, it was kind of the moderates turned on the left of our party. Now I think, how do we bring in, what, what does the DLC Democrats, mm -hmm. the, the blue dogs and moderates look, look like when we want to take back legislatures, elect governors, and things like that? And so I think we've, not necessarily that we compromise our principles, but when you're talking about the big tent, we want to be diverse, but there's an ideological diversity that we've really, we're less diverse than we were three or four years ago. And we've talked a lot about tactics, but candidates, candidates, yeah. candidates, because, you know, like any coach knows, you're a better coach when you've got a great talent on the floor. That's and right. And so we, That's we need, we, I mean, one thing that there's not been a lot of focus on is developing leaders, developing talent, mm -hmm. de generating a bench, and getting people that are a different profile. I love work, working for attorneys who are state, legislature, mm -hmm. le state legislators and others, but let's get some more military veterans, people that are entrepreneurs, community organizers out of the nonprofit sector and go get out in the community outside of just the people who are at the regular Democratic meetings and get some different sort of people to run because they're going to have different networks that will result in fundraising. And, and I think people are starved for somebody who doesn't look like the people they hate in Washington. Right. We don't need Prozac. We just need a plan. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, um, right. But, but two, two good things that are happening. I mean, one is there's an organization that's a national organization called the New Leaders Council that is mm, focused on see, yeah. training progressive leaders, and they have chapters in 20 or 30 different states and cities. And over time, they're going to build a bench of talent that's going to be out of the campaign sector, in, running for office, helping people. So that's good. Th there was something called Project New West that is now Project New America, and I think they're going to shift their focus or add to their focus in the South as well mm -hmm. in terms of that there they got focused on we can take back the Rocky Mountain West we mm -hmm. just need research and planning and and that happened and it's it's policy political um, and uh, and so there's going to be a focus in the south now because the south will come back I mean we have huge African-American population yeah, the, dem the demographics so, yeah. tell us that even Texas might eventually go exactly. back. But also well and there's been a fascinating development in that some of the major attorneys who are behind the uh, tobacco settlement have now filed about 27 different lawsuits against some of the big agribusiness companies and I think and they think they have a much more solid legal footing than with the tobacco settlement because with tobacco you've got a smaller piece of the economy with food you're talking about a big piece of the economy in terms of dollars and consumers mm -hmm. and th these attorneys think that they've got clear-cut violations of the law whereas tobacco there wasn't as much of a clear-cut violation of the law so I think over the next couple years this is going to radically change mm -hmm. this issue and uh, bring it into focus and I think it's going to in inform some dramatic changes in behavior from the agribusiness industry and and then what will happen is then I think some of agribusiness is going to go to Washington like they did on mm. asbestos litigation mm. and other things and they're going to want a bailout they're going to want li <laughs> their liability limit right absolutely a quick anecdote on that I, I moved from kind of an urban gentrified area to a, a more upscale zip code and the same grocery chain which will go mm. unnamed for this moment had an entirely <laughs> different approach to what's on the shelves mm -hmm. what kind of of lighting there was, sure. how updated the fixtures were, even when, and but the management staff still looked alike for some reason. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. It, it was amazing, yeah. and uh, I think that uh, um, organizations like Change.org mm -hmm. have a, create a great opportunity to make these corporate people better uh, corporate citizens on a lot of different levels, and, and maybe also on nutrition and, and the quality of the food. So, but there are, I think, the challenge is the, kind of the agribusiness industrial complex is so powerful, and there's not really much of a counterbalance. So I, I do think I'd mentioned like change.org and some of these advocacy outlets out there. I think that's one way it has to begin to start getting a, a 
another message out so that legislators, this is something I've dealt with four or 500 candidates, and not one of them have I had to prepare for a nutrition question, mm -hmm. really. And wow. so in, until they start getting asked, you're not going to see policy changes. Right, so you, get, you, have, you prep them for crime questions, education questions, but you haven't had to prep them for a nutrition but question. So for and the Medicaid's a great example of there's a brewing fight in a number of red states over Obamacare Medicaid expansion, right. mm -hmm. and this is going to be big because there's a lot of money, and I think there is a potential of real diverse coalition that could be yeah. fighting for uh, Medicaid expansion, and it's not just diverse on the left. It's it's mm -hmm. uh, across. It's kind of the Tea Party against the world because I think hospitals. This will have a big impact on hospitals if these red states don't accept the Medicaid expansion. A lot of money's at stake. You've got the business community, and that's a lot of money that wouldn't be in the sure. economy, not mm -hmm. to mention the faith-based community and, mm -hmm. and the left and labor. And so it's going to be interesting in a few of these states if there's not so many little mini wars on poverty in the next few months. Thank you to Kasim Reed, to Kevin Drum, to Karen Finney, and to John Rowley.